the nature of Islam that you feel contacted you? Well, I, I, I certainly wouldn't have been able to accept Islam if it, if it was if it was like full of superstitions and things and things which couldn't relate to the real world, right? And that I would say is the key. Because when I started reading the Quran, one of the things that just I woke up to was the Quran is full of directives to make you think, not to make you follow rituals, but to make you first of all think. So then it talks about, for instance, and I don't know any other scripture that does it to this degree, you know, where it points you to the sun, it points you to the moon, it says, these are creations of God. And the night and the day is a miracle. It is a miracle. You know, and our, the fact that water falls and, and, and produces fruits and, and animals eat those grass and, and greenery and everything, all this is like signposts telling you that there is a creator and an an almighty intellect behind everything that you see right there in front of you. That's very, very important because it didn't mean I had to, you know, believe some kind of unseen, you know, um, um, dogma without having perfect evidence <laughs> in front of me. And let me just tell you one more thing because there was this missing part of the story, which was where, just before I got the Quran. Um, I was swimming in Malibu, in, in kind of, I was like, uh, you know, California there. And, um, and I went out for a swim, and there was no one else really swimming that day. So it wasn't clever, uh, you know, California there. And, um, and I went out for a swim, and there was no one else really swimming that day. So it wasn't clever, and I did that. And then suddenly, wow, I, I think I was, I'm going to try and make my way back. And of course, at that point, I realized I ain't going to make it. You know, you've got fractions of seconds to decide what to do next. And I didn't have any hesitation. And I said, God, if you save me, I'll work for you. <laughs> and then a wave came, a small wave, and just took me. And I, I had everything I needed now to get back. So people could say, oh, that's a coincidence. Hey, hey, that's the most important coincidence that's ever happened in my life. As they say, coincidence is sometimes the way that God keeps himself anonymous. But this was no anonymous. This was me and God. And, and you know, later I found, and, and, you know, later I found, then the Quran came to me. And later, of course, I find that verse in the Quran. It says, oh, when the, when the storm comes and they're at sea, they make their religion pure for God. <laughs> so all these steps and signs, you know, I was reading, and were bringing me closer and closer. What could I do, Russell? What could I do? <laughs> I had to submit. That's it. Yeah, I really identify with what you're saying about recognizing that instead of looking for some peculiar dualistic uh, proof of God, you know, the lightning flash or the voice from on high, see in all things the divine beauty of nature and the potent intellect that we can read as being behind it.